thanks everybody for joining. Um, uh, in this session, I try to cover um, the upcoming deployment scenarios of SCMI in other environments. Typically, we've seen how SCMI works on device tree based systems. Uh, we'll try to see how that can be scaled across, and then I'll follow through with a few more updates as well. Um, I'll probably use 20 odd minutes, but in case you have some questions in between, please keep them pop popping up on the chat screen and we'll take them up. So as far as the agenda today goes, uh, I'll do a brief introduction of what SCMI is um, in case there are people um, who would like to have a small introduction of what it is. Uh, I'll provide some updates on the upcoming version three of the specification, should be released quite shortly. Um, then I provide an overview of how you could use an SCMI compliant firmware for ACPI based systems. Now this would be important if you are one of those who would like to have a, the same silicon run ACPI as well as, well as device tree based uh, software and you'd still like to keep a unified firmware binary. So that will be very useful in these scenarios. And the fourth slide, I will provide a little bit of overview of SCMI and one of the deployment scenarios in virtualization. I think uh, uh, Etienne and Vincent did talk about that in one of their slides. It's just a, a deeper dive into what that is. Introduction to SCMI. Um, now, SCMI is a firmware interface specification that's specifically targeted at power management and system control. And you could use it for your bare metal systems or your virtualized systems as well. Uh, so it provides both kinds of capability, uh, primarily because the specification itself is con comprising of two layers. One is a messaging layers, messaging layer, which is uh, fixed, which which is the way in which you encode messages for power control to send across to the SCMI server wherever it resides. And the other part of the specification talks about transports. Uh, now, SCMI does provide you with a choice of transports and the ability to select whichever is the most optimal for your own deployment and configuration. Now, the specification does provide examples of a few transports, but you could even have your own transport if you're willing to upstream that code into Linux and that works fairly as well. So the messaging part is fairly well decoupled from the transport paths and it provides you the capability to prove, to choose whatever you wish to. So for example, today we have transports that work not only on hardware based mailboxes, but also on SMC, HVC based doorbells. So that's the flexibility that it provides. The specification continues to evolve in collaboration with partners and the open source community. And that's where a lot of the inputs come from and a lot, a lot of the drive comes from. So if any of you have got questions, have got more inputs that you want to provide, do get us get in touch with us and we'll be happy to take forward your inputs and provide resolve, resolve issues in whatever ways we can in the specification. Um, and the reference kernel and the firmware support are fairly readily available through open source software. So you could have a look at the specification, you could have a look at the reference kernel and firmware, and you get a fairly good idea of how you could bring your system up within various considerations. And of course, there are different Leonardo projects running related to SCMI for deploying the SCMI server in different configurations. That's fairly useful as well, because you'd, you could reuse a lot of that code. Uh, SCMI v3. Now we are coming up with a new version of the specification. The one you'll see currently that's in ARM developer is SCMI v2. The v3 has not yet been released, but I'll provide, provide you a small, small, small snapshot of what has been added. Um, typically, I've just copied this diagram from the SCMI specification. Um, and you'll see there are two parts that have been um, highlighted in red. That is the voltage. Uh, and that is a new protocol that we have added, which is the voltage domain protocol. Now, this was, uh, this is something that would intercept the Linux voltage regulator framework. Uh, there was a lot of requirement and a lot of uh, a lot of asks from different partners to enable something because 
there are genuine use cases where you need to control the voltages of of peripherals like SD cards, uh, maybe your touch panels and so on and so forth. So this is one which that would readily take over that role. Uh, the other part that we have added is in sensors. Now sensors as an as an protocol used to exist uh, right from the version one itself, but here we have extended the protocol and this is this has been made mostly for automotive use cases where you need complicated sensors and multi-axis sensor support. So if you have sensors like accelerometers, gyroscopes, um, or my inertial measurement unit, then SCMI provides you now the capability to map these multi-axis sensors in, in a standardized way into the kernel. Uh, it provides you also the capability now to instead of requesting a read from the sensor every single time, you could just configure a rate at which the firmware notifies you of sensor readings. So you don't have to go and manually read the sensor every time. You can just say notify me after X milliseconds and you would get that rate of response from the firmware via an SCMI notification. Um, and the good thing is that it's uh, it's sort of compliant with the industrial IO framework in Linux. So you could have an industrial IO type standardized driver on top as well to consume all this data. Um, and it's primarily for automotive use cases so that even if you have got different sensor chips or different types of sensors on your platform, you could provide the OS with a standardized view and all the complexity can be hidden away into a layer of firmware lower down the stack. Uh, then um, another thing that we added was enhanced support for virtualization. This was something for which we added a Vertio based transport capability. Now, as uh, as we, I mentioned in the earlier slide, SCMI does allow you the capability to choose a transport of your choice. So as a result, the specification itself is very flexible. So we made some changes in the wording of the specification to make sure that Vertio type transports can be easily accommodated. But in parallel, there is a companion SCMI Vertio device specification proposal in the OSS Vertio mailing list today. So you can go and have a look at that if you're interested in seeing how that SCMI Vertio device looks. So all the SCMI Vertio device would be is a separate transport layer and the upper layers of SCMI in the Linux kernel which does voltage, clock, reset, performance, power, sensors, management would be standardized. So there's only a fair little change in Linux kernel and there's a lot of benefit because you could then virtualize the entire stack and take the SCMI server capability into a different portion of your software. Um, I think this is all that I have as far as SCMI version three updates are concerned. I'll move quickly to uh, the ACPI questions. So there, there is now an increasing demand for having SCMI type deployments in systems which use ACPI. Uh, and the, the, the core requirement here is that you need to have a unified firmware for both ACPI and device tree based implementations. Because while the kernel is different for device tree based systems and um, ACPI based systems, you would like to reuse your firmware and use the same interfaces for both. So in this, in this I, there are two parts um, to these slides. In the first slide, I'll show how processor idle state management and processor performance state management can be done in a standardized manner in combination with the ARM fixed functional hardware specification. Now that's a specification you can get off, off developer.arm.com. And uh, the, the broad guidance over here is that in ACPI systems, we use the native ACPI method as defined and as already supported in the kernel. And SCMI provides just the transport layer for, con for communicating with your firmware, which understands SCMI. So for processor idle states, we use the L underscore LPI method, which is a standardized method in LPI. And the FFH, which is, uh, which is as a part of the ARM FFH specification, uh, provides you a way to discover entry methods, power state residency, and user statistics through PSCI. Uh, there are examples for it already there that you could use. And the PSCI agent then can reside wherever it does today, same as DT-based implementations, and that agent can use SCMI for changing power domains as it sees fit. 
Uh, and this FF8 support is supported in the mainline kernel today for low power idle and this maps to PSCI calls. So that should take care of at least the CPU idle parts for you. Um, coming to processor performance management, uh, now here is where, what, where you like to use uh, CPPC in ACPI terms, uh, collaborative performance, processor performance control, and that uses underscore CPC methods in ACPI, which is continuous performance control. Now, if you're using CPC method, um, you, provide, you have to provide certain capabilities uh, via your ASL tables. Uh, you provide performance capabilities and they can be encoded as D words. You can just put the data in there, which is your max performance, min performance, lowest nom nominal performance, and so on and so forth. Uh, performance monitoring capabilities are exposed using the ARM activity monitors unit. And this is enabled through FFH. So all ARM implementations which have an ARM activity monitors unit can use the CPU counters and the reference performance counters and the FFH tells you how to do that. Performance control is achieved using SCMI fast channels. Um, that's a direct map via system memory. And the performance limited register as, this, as the ACPS specification tells you to today is Points, points to an unused zeroed location. Uh, so the CPI 6.3 ARR version will clarify that in case your register performance limited register is not implemented, it's fair to return zeros. So the status of the patches for performance monitoring using FFH is work in progress. As you can see, if you use the CMI fast channels, performance controls becomes very trivial. You just need to map the location of the fast channel into your into your uh, ACPI tables and you're done for it. Um, now using SCMI compliant firmware and ACPI systems, uh, we covered um, how to do idle, how to do performance management, and then there are miscellaneous other use cases. Um, you might need to access a sensor, you might need to do other different things as well. Uh, so for that, there is a way in which the SCMI protocol today maps over PCC channel type three. So we recommend that in ACPI you use PCC channel type three for most of the other use cases that ACPI supports. And on the right hand side is a diagram that shows you how that maps to an SCMI channel. So if you see that the PCC channel type, so, so PCC channel works via a, a table mechanism over here. There is a subspace structure and these are the fields that the ACPI specification says that must exist. So in these fields, the base address is which points to the SCMI shared memory location and the SCMI channel layout is shown at the rightmost section where you have a signature, your mailbox flags, length, message header, and the message payload, they all sit within the shared memory. And then, if you look at B, that is the platform interrupt, it maps to the platform interrupt in our mailbox, in our mailbox platform interrupt mechanism. In the SCMI specification specifically, this refers to the mailbox in case of shared memory doorbell type usages, and C is your doorbell. And then channel complete, check mask, and update mask are, are the simple ways in which you just um, set, set and update your channels. So, and in your channel status. So all of this maps very, very directly to the um, SCMI shared memory mailbox structure as defined in the specification. So if you're using a PCC channel type three for communication, you should be able to pass messages directly using the same channel to an SCMI compliant firmware. So all that you need to do is use the same ACPI based intrinsics that we use in platforms today. Uh, you don't need to change a lot in the kernel and still your firmware which talks SCMI should be able to work for such a system using a native ACPI language. Um, important part over here is that you could even use an op region uh, support for PC channel type three. And now the op region support is something that for PC channel type three, I, I'm not very sure whether the kernel supports it today. Uh, we'll have to have a look, but it's it's possible nonetheless to just use a basic channel, PCC channel type three communication and communicate with an SCMI compliant firmware on the other side. And this is for all other use cases, which you, which is not CPPC or which is which is not performance 
or which is not uh, CPU idle. And finally, uh, so that, that takes care of your ACP IBE systems. Um, and then finally, you have the virtualization story. And this is, mind you, this is again one of the modes of deployment. This is not the only mode of deployment though. There are various other modes of deployment that you could do. One of the modes of deployment is an SCMI server, which runs in a virtual machine. So if you look at the diagram, you have a VM1, which is a standard virtual machine that has an operating system. And let's, let's suppose you have a device that's assigned to this particular VM. And for the device, the power control paths are shown below. So you have CPU Frex support, your reset framework support, Gen PD support, hardware mon support, clock framework, and regulator framework supports, right? And the blue paths are the Linux specific uh, frameworks and the orange paths below are the SCMI protocols that map to those parts of the framework. And then they all talk via the SCMI transport which can be HVC SMC. As I mentioned earlier, there is a Vertio SCMI transport that has been proposed. So you could talk over SCMI Vertio as well, and that would take you to an SCMI server that runs in a virtual machine. And the virtual machine, again, the blocks over the virtual machine that I've shown over here, the blocks of the SCMI server are blocks per se. It is not necessarily that this is how your server looks, but the overall idea is that for all your performance requests, for all your peripheral reset requests, for all your power domain control requests, um, for your clock requests, and for voltage domain requests, you can go over is SCMI. And again, if you've got hardware mon or IIO type sensors, you could again have your sensor device that sits on the standard SCMI sensor protocol and still use the same Vertio transport layer to go to a server that exists in a control VM somewhere in your system. And as I said, this is one of the applications and then you could have the control VM talk via dedicated mailbox channel to a power microcontroller, power coprocessor, and then your secure world might also be able to do the same via secure channel. And there are, so this is, a, this is one of the solutions there are various other solutions where you could actually have each of these virtual machines talk directly to the system power controller, but then there are security security implications there. The CMI protocol provides you commands to set up your environment in such scenarios, but this is important, but we wanted to show this part because this one is something that requires some minimal hypervisor change and you would be able to use your standard power control path as is. So you, if you're using a device and the device in a bare metal system uses certain APIs or certain, certain power control framework uh, aspects, you do not have to modify them. You can use them straight off the bat as they exist. So you can really run that off the bat the moment you change your SCMI transport to Vertio, everything else looks the same for the virtual machine in question. Um, and I think I, with this, I would come at, to the end of my presentation. I try to keep it as short as, short as possible. Uh, there are a few useful links over here to the SCMI specification, to the ARM FFA specification, to the SCP firmware. And if you want the Vertio SCMI device links, there are some links to the um, mailing list into which the SCMI Vertio device specification has been proposed. And then obviously according the SCMI device ID allocation ballot as well, that's there. Um, so at this point in time, I would like to end my presentation and we'll check if there are any questions for the last five minutes. Okay, so there's a question for the date for SMI V3 being published. So we are trying to get the beta out by the end of the month. So you won't be able to search for the beta, but it will be a publicly available specifications. Um, so Jonathan, if you do require a link to the beta, uh, I, I should be able to send you one if you drop me an email. That shouldn't be an issue. It'll be a public beta 
and there will be, I think, RFC patches posted in the kernel against that. Uh, then from the beta onwards to an actual uh, final release, it'll take another couple of months. So in the worst case, you're looking at an STMI v3 final version release uh, by the end of the year. 